Hello everyone and welcome to today's session. Study this or that. Study psychology. Sell. Is it ready? Sell? We'll know later. Okay. Thank you for taking your time today and join us. I'm Sherry. And here we have Manju. We'll be running a live here in this session from time to ten. There's there's two parts. So good thing is we're gonna choose one winner each from the session and they will be given the grateful voucher. And also there'll be a game session conduct, be conducted at the end of the, uh, somewhere you need to be patient and pay attention when it's gonna happen so that you can win a voucher by yourself, okay? And if you miss anything or you need to go to toilet, toilet break or you, you're hungry, you need to be away, no worries. A live version of this webinar will be recorded and it will be available after this, okay? Here we have Manu today with us, and he's here with us to share us some psychology insight, and let's welcome him. Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'll just give you a brief intro about myself. So basically, I did a Bachelor of Psychology here in Malaysia prior to doing a Master in Counseling in Australia. I actually worked, worked for Australia in Australia for two years, and then before coming back to ACC Global Malaysia. Yeah. All right. Okay, Manu, let's tell us what are you going to share with us today? Okay. So basically today, um, I'm just going to tell you about the overview of uh, what is psychology about. So I'm not going very deep into the theories and everything because I'm not here to lecture about psychology. So I'm just going to tell you about what is psychology and how you can use psychology uh, and apply it to our daily life and how it's very evident that uh, it's sort of existing in our daily life. So that's pretty much what I'm going to do today. Okay. So the, okay, stop loud. All right, I'll be louder. Can you hear me? Is that better? Yep. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, his set's not really right near to me. Right. So to start this off, um, hold on. Yep. So ask, um, Ms. Sherry, so okay. what is the general perception of psychology in your words? Mm, to me, me, psychology... Yep. Can you hear me? All good, right? Yeah. No, okay. Okay. Uh, to me, psychology. Uh, yep. Psychology. I think it's more like a mind reading kind of thing. You know, you try to look at people, and you definitely know. Okay, he's trying to hit on me, or this guy is craving for fried chicken. That kind of things. Just for looking by, by just looking at them. Okay. Um. There is a little bit of uh, psychology involved in what you're you're mentioning. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, um, there's some misconception there, which I'll address in this next slide. So I also like to ask hmm. the audience, yep. what kind of concept do you have about psychology? Feel free to type into the chat box and we'll see if you're correct or not. Okay, Manu, you can carry on. Yep, sure. All right, so to get back to uh, what you were saying, right? So basically, um, psychology, what, what you're saying is more towards that mind reading. So that's not exactly what uh, psychology taught us to do. So I mean, there's a lot of perception that what, um, people perceive that what psychologists can do is mind reading or fortune telling. But essentially speaking, that's what we are, we are and that's not what we are taught to do or learn to do. So, so the thing is, right, um, just speaking, when you talk about psychology, right, a lot of people will be think, understand, uh, talking about psychology is a common sense thing. And then, and then psychology is about mind reading or fortune telling. So let's break it down in, in short, right? Mm -hmm. um, psychology, in a way, is common sense in the sense that um, you see, like I said, psychology uh, is about understanding human mind, understanding mm -hmm. the mind and how, how, you, how it applies to us, uh, human, human in our daily life. So the thing is, right, because we are living our life daily, right, so then you can observe uh, things happening around us or with ourselves. Then you will see that, oh, it's a common sense. Because I know this is happening to us or to me or to others. So just speaking, that's true. But what psychology helps us to do is to sort of break it down and understand better why someone behaved that way or why certain things happen that way. So what mm. we do is we try to analyze a particular action or behavior or, or even situation to understand better in that sense. So that's why it's more than just common sense. Mm. And then just in short for the mind reading fortune telling part. So like I mentioned earlier, we are not taught to do that because um, it, I mean, you look, you watch movies that there are people trying to show you that you can do it that way and stuff like that. Yeah. But actually that, that's pretty much wrong. In mm. At least not in the context of psychology. The psychology wise, we don't learn to do that. We try to understand stuff based on what we see or what we feel. So not, not just based on what we, okay, based on what we see as in the thing is that the thing must have happened, you know, or is it happening. So not like 
the purpose is standing there and then nothing has really happened and then you just broke into their minds and then you get what, what they're thinking, fried chicken or, or whatnot. Uh, that's, not what we, what we, uh, that's not how it works, I would say. How about you? Have you ever tried reading people's mind before? Yeah, so the thing is, right, uh, generally speaking, before learning psychology, I, I, I knew about the, the, the mind reading concept thing. But mm. so I tried doing that, but of course it doesn't work because that's not how how uh, how I was uh, I understand. So then I when I was in psychology for the for the past I mean for the three years right, I tried again after one year or two to to sort of to see if it works again you know or if it really truly works on mind reading and stuff. So just speaking, it doesn't work. But the thing is right, like I said, we are not trained to do that. So I can try to look deep into my friend's eyes you know or what what they are like, literally just trying to see what they're really thinking and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Unless you understand the person, then maybe you could so-called mind reading, but that's because you understand mm -hmm. the person well. But mm -hmm. that's not exactly mind reading. You know, you can't mind read like a, a stranger on the street. That's not that's not how it works. So oh. uh, I would say I failed doing that. <laughs> I tried I and I still failed. Yeah. How about let's say the prediction of end of the world? Because a lot of people actually said, "Oh, 2012 is gonna be a uh, end of the world. And everyone's gonna die." But then apparently we are all still here. How about that? Does that have to do with psychology as well? Because they are trying to predict something in the future. Okay, so there's elements of psychology involved in there. So like, like um, how, how I put it this way, it's easier to still understand is, right? Psychology, generally speaking, is about the, uh, looking for evidence to support a particular statement or action or basically to justify something. So mm -hmm. prediction-wise, right, it can be predicted um, based on a few factors. Whether whether it's from the what the past history, whether it's from the what humans are doing, or whatever what, what um the environment is happening. So there's a lot of other factors. So what mm -hmm. psychology helps to do is right, you try to uh, get evidence behind behind whatever uh, they're trying to predict to support the the, the or support or sort of strengthen the argument that this is going to happen in two zero one two or two zero twenty twenty kind of stuff. So what we, what we are we are we psychologists are trying to do is right, we are trying to find out um. How, how, how we can support the state, uh, argument or the statement to make it more reliable or make it like a more trustable in, in, in the sense. So mm -hmm. that's what we do. We try to be some more like an evidence-based concept thing. So we are, we are supporting stuff using evidence, not just by saying that uh, because I know that's how it works, because I am a mm -hmm. psychologist, I know better, then this is how it, it should go. Uh, that's not how it, how it works. So oh, we need to tell okay. people that you need to get evidence, then only you can support the, uh, the statement, then that's how you make the statement stronger. Mm -hmm. That's what psychologists how about, try to how do. How about this thing, which is more applicable mm. to us, especially mm. when people like to play poker, play mahjong and play, let's say, uno. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're always trying to think or try to guess what is the cut or the, or the mahjong, mahjong cube or whatever that's called, okay? I don't play mm -hmm. mahjong, so sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. how, uh, try to guess what is in their hand in order to win the game. Okay, so the thing is about that one, right? Um, mm. It does sound a bit like mind reading or, or even yeah. fortune telling. But yeah. yeah, but actually, essentially speaking, it's not exactly any of those. Because what we are trying to do, right? Sorry. Yeah. So what we are trying to do is, right? Um, we are trying to get the visual cues from the from the the players around. So we are trying to look at their facial expression or the gestures, you know, like they're fidgeting their hands, you know, uh, stroking their hair or or they're like stretching their nose, stuff like that. So we are trying to see. If, if those actions right, will symbolize something, whether whether they're anxious, you know, or whether whether they are like uh, having having a good cast and maybe they're smirking, you know, or smiling, then you will sort of like get the visual cues from from what they are show, showing you that this is what they are having. So it's not about mind reading; it's really about understanding what they are trying to express and show us. So basically, you are just reading reading them as a person instead of reading your mind. Correct. That's precisely the thing. Because a lot of people say the most basic one is, oh, when you meet someone, if they fold their hand, meaning they're defensive or they're trying to protect themselves. Mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that is somehow like a vision cue as well because there's something that you see. Correct. So it's oh, also yeah. same like some, who, some people who are talking, you know, whether they're looking up or looking to the right or left, you know, whether they're lying or not. That's also mm -hmm. part of it as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the thing is, right, um, for psychology, most parts of it, right, wherever you study for, even if you're going to go into master's in the future for a particular uh, area, right, to specialize in, these three things, right, will never run away or will never be forgotten. But the thing is, well, how, how we humans work is we have our thoughts, we have our feelings, and we have our behavior. So these three components will always be in us. I mean, there's no way you can discard any of them. And the thing is, as you can see, the arrows, right, doesn't just go one way. Because the thing is, these three, they interact with each other any way possible. So I'll just give you an easy example, right, to understand better of the concept. So this scenario is Miss Gorgeous likes Mr. Handsome. And then she's thinking whether she should confess to him. 
Mm. So deep down in her thoughts, it, it, will be, it, will be, it will be what is this scenario? She should, uh, she should, should she confess or not? Then her feelings could be she's feeling anxious or, 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 or anxiety, basically, or curious because she don't know whether whether he, uh, she should confess or not. Mm. So the thing is, right, the next thing will be behavior. Of course, either A or B. A, she, 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 she confess to him. Or B, she just don't confess. So mm. basically, you can see how what she's thinking affects how she's feeling. And then how, how, how she's feeling also affecting what she did or what she would do. Mm. Yeah. So let's say after, okay, let's say, because you say there's no, no, like no exit of this triangle. Okay, let's mm -hmm. say we go back away. After Miss mm -hmm. Gorgeous confessed to Mr. Handsome and Mr. Handsome mm -hmm. is like, oh, I'm so sorry, actually, I'm married. Uh, I'm sorry for giving the wrong message. So obviously, Miss Gorgeous is going to feel so sad and feel so embarrassed, baby. And after that, she'll be feeling very sad. And after that, back to thoughts, meaning uh, she's going to think, oh, should I just, you know, be here for him forever? Or should I just move on? That's like her thoughts. Yep. So after so she done like, thinking, mm, yeah. So yep, after she done thinking, first. so after mm -hmm. she done thinking, then she will she'll, uh, do something which is back to behavior again. Correct. So you 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 give a very good example how we can we can go the other way around and also can leave that to behavior. Mm -hmm. So basically, like, like what you mentioned earlier, so it can be thoughts first the feelings behavior and can be also the other way around. So this is this essentially um how this whole thing uh, could work and there's no just one way to 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 explain a particular thing because it could go mm -hmm. either way as well. Mm -hmm. So then the, the question now is after knowing this, so what, what what can you do next with it? So this is the thing I want to touch after that. <laughs> The other thing is, right, um, there are three components here, thoughts, feelings, and behavior. And I'm talking about behavior. Because the thing is, right, if you look into this, right, uh, we are using the thoughts and feelings, generally speaking, um, to explain behavior. Well, so the thing is, the describe and explain, that part, right, basically is what we are trying to, 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 uh, to find out as a psychology or as graduate or psychologist. So after we find out about, about the behavior and explain about it, then we can predict the future behavior, whether, whether the same thing will happen or not, or whether the new thing will happen, or whether a different kind of behavior will happen. And then the last part uh, will, be, will be a thing that we'll see that whether the behavior needs to be changed or avoided or not in the future. Of course, that's, that one is not telling you that you must do that in the future because some behaviors, if it's a good one, you should encourage them to continue, so not to change or avoid. Mm -hmm. So essentially, this is what we are trying to do as a, a, in the psychology. We try to seek uh, to explain the behavior and then try to predict the future behavior and then we try to change or what when, when we need to. Okay, since it's a triangle and there's another mm. component, why do mm. we just focus on behavior instead of uh, the other two? Okay, <clears throat> so this is a, 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 a very, uh, very tricky question actually. The thing is, right, um, like I mentioned earlier, I, I focus on behave, behavior here. So mm. why I do so is because behavior, you can sort of like, uh, see or observe or feel it in a way. So basically, behavior is like an outcome of this three process. So the thing is like, uh, like, like, like the rejection part, the, the confession part that happened, right? Basically, that's a behavior already. So from there, we can see what's the top process of the, of the person and also mm -hmm. what is the feelings that uh, he or she are feeling. So the mm -hmm. thing is this, is, this is what we can do. Because thoughts and feelings, right? Okay, feelings in a way, you may be able to feel it if the person is expressing it. So at least that, that one is still possible, you know, to, for you to sort of break down a little bit here and there. But with thoughts, right, you can't break it down. If the person doesn't want to tell you, like I said, we can't mind read. So I don't know what you're thinking or what he's thinking. So that's why we try to use behavior to understand, you know, or, or to backtrack to, to the feelings and the thoughts, you know, the process so we can understand better, you know, why the behavior happened and how we can improve or how we can continue doing that or encouraging that. Mm. Mm. Basically, because we can see the behavior, so it's easier for us to analyze but then we cannot see someone's feeling and thoughts, so uh, it's kind of hard to focus on because some uh, you cannot give an exact answer about that. Correct. Mm, I That's see. precisely okay. the thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay. the thing is, um, just to, to to understand better about particular thoughts and thought process of the person mm -hmm. or the people, right? Generally speaking, we need to understand the behavior as well, not just mm -hmm. the first two. Yeah. So meaning behavior is like the outcome of something, la. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So then it goes to our first QA session. And um, before going back oh, okay. to that, right? Hold mm -hmm. on, yeah. Yep. Yes, I, I saw earlier earlier that there's one uh, one of the participants actually said that uh psychology is about understanding the human mind. 
I'm sorry, yeah. I didn't I didn't credit you on that. That is correct. That is the, precisely the what the psychologist is trying to learn or are taught to. So mm -hmm. kudos to the person who actually answered that. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay, so here comes to our first session of QA. And we have a few questions over here. And also don't don't forget, we are gonna choose one of the attendees that ask question in this session and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll give you a grateful voucher if we think that your question is the best. So just, you know, pop your question in and why not stand a chance to win a grateful voucher, okay? All right, okay. First question. What is the differences, what is, what is the difference between psychology and counseling? Okay. Um, this one I can explain well because I think this is what essentially I did. So I did, like I said, I did psychology degree and then I did a master in counseling. <clears throat> so generally speaking, right, talking about psychology and counseling, right, um, if you talk about counseling, you may heard of people telling you about that is some sort of psychology component involved. Because, and sorry, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, because anyhow, right, when you talk about counseling, right, it's about um, talking to a person or talking to a client and then trying to understand, you know, from the perspective, what, what has happened and what is happening and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that, that, is, uh, that is essentially what counselors are, tra are trained to do. Well, psychology, basically, um, if you're just talking about psychology in general, right, we are learning about human minds, observing people, trying to understand, you know, and we're basically we're trying to make sense of what's happening here and there. So just speaking, right, a psychology or psychologist, they don't do what counselors do, but if you go for a counseling psychologist, which is, which is, which is actually a, a particular a degree for a master's, that one, right, is pretty much, um, it's pretty much what, what, what we, we call it uh, a hybrid of counseling and psychology. So in short of what they do is, right, they do the what counselors can do, which is to talk to the client, you know, to try to uh, get, them, get them to think about their own solution and stuff like that, to guide them through. And then the other thing they can do is, they can actually uh, give assessments, like psychological assessments. Basically, uh, let's say the, uh, the clients are deep, uh, very depressed or the clients are very anxious. You can actually give them like a scale or survey kind of thing to see how depressed they are or how, how anxious they are. That is what counselors cannot do. So that is the main, that's the key difference between counseling psychologists and counseling. Mm, yeah. Okay. Okay, the next one. Uh, what's yep. the difference between psychology and psychiatrists? Is it very different? Okay, so the thing is, right, this is actually very different. I mean, although, although you will see the word psych at the, the front there, but mm. just speaking, they are very different. So essentially speaking, like I explained a psychology earlier, I pretty much, you are very well uh, understood about psychology, how it works now, but psychiatrist is quite different. So other than doing what psychologists can do, right, they can actually prescribe uh, medicine or, or drugs. So basically, like the example I gave you earlier, let's say the client is very depressed. So psychiatrists can choose to give them an antidepressant drug to sort of like uh, reduce the depression level so that they can like uh, explain better or talk better, you know, or discuss better of the problem. So with what psychology can do, right, in a therapy session, right, psychologists cannot give this kind of drug because they're not trained to do so. So mm. if, they, if they provide any, any kind of medication, right, basically it's considered illegal because they are not trained to do so and not legal to do so. So the route to become psychiatrist is a very long route because you need to have a medicine degree. So that means it could be like eight, nine years down the road. So yes, you need to know the medical knowledge. For well, psychology, you do need medical knowledge. If you want, of course, this is your bonus, but that's not required. Oh, so yeah. meaning psychology, you can only use, use your mouth. Ah. <laughs> Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. Uh, will you still be able to, okay, there's actually two questions that are similar. Mm -hmm. Will you mm -hmm. still be able to pursue a bachelor's science in psychology if you didn't take any science like bio or math in A-levels? And also... My I study math in pre u if I want to study psychology? Okay, so this is the thing with psychology. Um, generally speaking, psychology, right, you'll be learning a little bit of stats, I would say. The stats is actually mainly meant for, for you to, uh, to sort of run researches and then to try to get the, how to say, analyze the results in a way. To see how many, for example, how many percentage of these people likes A or how many percentage of these people likes what product B, the kind of thing. So mm. you would learn a bit of stats in, in psychology. So that's why math is not a, uh, math is, okay, I would say math is good that if you have it in your, in your L levels or any pre U or SMAT or SPM or whatever it is. So the thing is, it's good to have it if you, if you can, but it's not a requirement. Because for a psychology degree, right, they have no, uh, what they call the prerequisite. There's no such thing that you need to have a science, de a science network background, whether it's like a biology or physics or chemistry or anything like maths or MS. 
So the thing is, there's no such thing needed when you study psychology. But the thing is, if you have that knowledge, right, then there's a bonus, especially, I mean, maths mainly. Biology, if you have it, it's good. Chemistry or physics, those are no needs. So basically, biology and maths, if you did it in, the, in your foundation, your pre-U level, it's good to have. But if not, um, the thing with psychology is, right, good thing is, from the first year onwards, they will teach you about the stats or anything of the maths required in psychology. So mm-hmm. it's okay to go in without any knowledge of those. Okay, yeah. next one. How do psychological tricks work? Do they work all the time? Okay, so this is very trick. This is a tricky question itself. Because the thing is, right, psychological tricks, right? I mean, there can be a lot of different types. Because the thing is, uh, well, I would say one good thing you study psychology is because we know how human mind works and also how human mind thinks and stuff. So in a way, we can we can sort of like play around with the mind. So, like for example, right? Because you you know you know um this particular person, right? It's uh it's easy to be teased, for example. So you know, you, you know this person is a very, very, very prone, you know, to very, very, just a, like a little bit of a, of a, of a, of a joke. And then she, she, he or she can be very sensitive. So that's why you know the person well. Then you, you, then you can do the kind of, the kind of trick, like, just, like sort of uh, just use a particular sensitive topic, for example. And then you can sort of trigger the kind of reaction, which is what uh, bullies would like to see, actually. This is, what, this is not a thing I, I encourage, but this is what bullies try to use. Because they know you are an easy target. They know you're easy target. So that's why they're trying to use whatever, you know, that you're sensitive to you. Then they throw it to you and trigger the reaction out of it, whether you are angry, you are sad or, or embarrassed. That is what they want to see out of it. So they enjoy that part of it um, because they can evoke the kind of response from, from the person that they're trying to do. So it's not exactly, uh, I'm not saying that um, you can't apply in this uh, bad situation. You can apply in a lot of different, different kinds of situations. Just that you need to understand the person and uh, the top process of the person, then it's easier. How about hypnosis? Because I, uh, okay, another hmm. person asked, yeah, he, yeah. Uh, he or she asked about hypnosis. Is it a real yeah. thing or a fake thing? Okay, hypnosis is actually a very interesting thing. So hypnosis itself, right, is not, uh, okay, I would say it's not part of psychology in the sense that what, what part of what you learn. Mm. And there's no particular major or subject you can take in psychology about hypnosis. Hypnosis is actually another, another course by itself, like, uh, like a short course if you want to take it. Mm-hmm. So there is a, a little bit of psychology involved in the sense that you are also in a therapy room with one-to-one to the person. And then you are trying to, to, to hypnotize the person, you know, and try, try to get him or her to talk out whatever that can't be expressed or in, in, their, in, their, in their deep, deep down in their mind that they can't express out. Mm. So, so that, that, that is the thing that mainly many times in hypnosis. And the thing is, it's very hard to explain in hypnosis in general. So it would be easier that, um, I mean, for, for me to explain further later on, because uh, uh, otherwise you'll go to the whole session. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, shall we pick one more question and we can move on? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, there's one. Uh, Isabel asks, is psychology more geared to studying the thought process, belief, and ideas of individuals or mm-hmm. the common ideas and the shared cultures of humanity in a more general scope? Okay, um, psychology is actually more towards the first part. The second part, okay, you do, however, we'll learn about the second part. But second part will be more towards sociology. So that doesn't mean that psychology doesn't touch anything about the common ideas or the shared cultures of humanities in, the, in, uh, in general. Mm. So just that sociology will study more towards that in the, in the, in the demographic level. So that's why I would say, um, if you study psychology, right, it's best that you, even if you don't take a major in phys- sociology, it's best to take a particular subject in that because mm. it's very much related to what you need to know about psychology, about human, and then how it applies to different culture or different kind of thinking process in a different, different setting. So that is very important to know that sociology and psychology are, are very much related to each other. And it sort of like expands psychology in a way for using sociology uh, concept. Okay, thank you, Manu. Yep. Okay, yep. I think we are done with the first session of this Q and A. Okay, mm-hmm. let's choose one lucky attendees for them to get the vouchers. Which question do you think is the most interesting and you know uh, can give a lot of people like new insights? Let me think. Um, hmm. it, a lot of them are actually quick questions, actually. I say I'll say if I really want to choose one, I would actually prefer prefer Isabel's try, uh, question because yeah, Isabel's question is the one that actually explains the best. Mm-hmm. I mean, what uh, psychology is and then how it can uh, relate to sociology as well. Yep. 
Okay, congratulations, Isabel Lee. We are going to contact you after this session so that you can get your vouchers. Okay, let's move on to the next part. Okay. Okay, by the way, thank you for everyone for asking questions and keep it coming. We'll get your, answer, uh, get your question answered if we haven't. So, yeah. Okay. Right. So, this second part, um, I'll just go uh, briefly before going to this part. I just want to tell you, right, I mean, if you want to study psychology, you need to know the right, you have the right mindset for it. So in order to have the right mindset, right, there's three parts you need to, to, to focus on. So first thing is, right, the passion. So are you really, you know, because psychology can be like a three-year degree or five years if you study master's all the way. So you will be dealing with humans, basically, or human minds and also human behavior and stuff. This is basically all about human interaction for the next three to five years. So your first part is, do you have the passion to continue doing that? So then the next part is, right, do you have the interest, you know, to, to really, uh, and also the, the third part of combine is do interest and curiosity. So do you have the interest, you know, in really to find out more about humans, you know, about who, about what they think, what they do, and also to understand better why this happened and that happened. So if you really have that kind of uh, curiosity and also the interest in that, plus the passion in continuing all the way to study by human, then psychology is the right thing for you to do. Because otherwise, if you lose out, I mean, let's say you lose interest halfway after second year, third year, right? Then you sort of feel felt lost and then you don't know where to go about it. So mm. that's why it's very important to know about uh, what, what you really want to do and whether you really have the interest to continue. So okay. that's, the, that's the main thing of it. And then um, after that, all right, and then after that, right, uh, a good thing to know is after you decided to study psychology, so what are the options you have? So I, I guess generally speaking, right, you will see there's Bachelor of Science Psychology and Bachelor of Arts Psychology. Whether you see in Lockley, Malaysia, or you see in UK or US or anywhere in the world, right? These are the two common ones that you see, okay? Uh, I'll talk about the health after this because that one is, uh, can be a misconception to some people. So just to go short in short, right? Bachelor of Science Psychology, right? It's usually more analytical in general. That's why it's called Bachelor of Science. So what happened is, right? You'll be running more researches, you know, or projects or surveys. So it'll be more, uh, you can say more hands-on in a way. So you'll be doing more of this kind of, uh, researchers and surveys, right? whether it's in, in the, within the lab setting or the uni setting or even outside the market industry, the market world and stuff like that. So this is the fun part of the science psychology. You can do a lot of different kinds of projects and experiments around. Well, you do, if you go to the arts, right? Essentially speaking, you will, you will study the same thing or the, about, the, about both of it, like the same content. Because the content are not going to be different. It's still psychology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just the second one, right? I would call it more practical or more towards application of real life situation. Because you, you basically will you learn about the psychological concepts and the thing is you will still get to do a bit of research here and there. Like they, they don't ex exclude that part. So the hands-on part is still remains in the, in the component. Just that it has slightly less focus on that because they want to get you to understand the concept and apply it to a different, different setting. So usually students, right, will, will, take, uh, will, give, will be given a lot of electives to take around, uh, around different areas so they can combine it and then learn about other different areas and apply psychology to it. So that is about our psychology. And then the last part is, there is this health. So some students are taught that health is actually a bachelor degree, like a bachelor of health psychology. But um, in general, it is actually a specialist degree in master's, in master's level, sorry. So the thing is, with health psychology, right, because the thing is, when you talk about health, right, you talk about mental health, and then um, you can also relate to your body health, biological health, like how, how your, what you think can affect your depression or stress level, stuff like that. So, that one is what health psychology will try to break down, but that one is a master's level. You can't study that on a bachelor level. Yeah. Oh, so that's okay. a pretty main difference. So meaning if you take bachelor in science or arts, you mm. can also go to health. You don't have to be uh, in either one. Uh, no. So the mm -hmm. thing is, right, both also you can go to the health uh, master's, but just mm -hmm. one, one thing to take note, you will need to mm -hmm. take a bachelor of uh, honors degree in psychology. So mm -hmm. that one is a fourth year, four year honors. I'll explain that in the next session. That mm -hmm. one is what you need to understand how the structure would work. Okay, so, you see, okay. Yeah. yeah, keep going. Yeah, so I, I just want to say that um, regardless of, uh, of taking psychology, science or arts, right, mm. both are equally good. Because I, I, saw, I, saw a question, uh, I saw a question that's saying that so basically which is better. So both are actually essentially is, is good. It's just that whether you prefer which structure more. There's not going to be say your advantage going to science or arts or arts, is, or arts psychology are better than science. There's no such thing. Both are equally good. Okay, so Bachelor of Arts, because you write there, more practical. What mm. if they are, they are more hands-on and like practical people, but then they want to be in science? 
Okay, so the so the thing is, right? Um, if 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 even if you do science, right? And and the thing is, or yes, you are doing more researches or more projects and stuff. But the thing is, right? What you learn essentially, right? You are actually also applying or applying to in the real. In, if you look into it, right? You're still applying to the real world setting because when you do researches, right? If you do outside the the lab, right? You are actually talk dealing with the interaction outside outside world with the real world. So in a way. It's a different kind of learning because that one you get to do all this research and projects, more of those, and apply and then see see from the the basically data from these people outside of the world. While for the arts, right, you may not do as much of that, but then you still you 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 will you you get more of uh, interaction with the sorry with the society and all through the through the basically the lectures, a few few trips and stuff like that. So you do mm -hmm. you get a lot of that in arts, or compared to science. But so I to, uh, uh -huh. mm. I'd like to ask you. Before you go into psychology, what makes you want to study this? Okay, uh, for me, it's quite straightforward. Because for me, I, I've been always uh, curious about learning about humans, learning about human minds and how they think and, and what, what, why, why, why that happened and why this behavior happened, that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. I already know that this is the field that I'm go I want to go to. And lucky enough for me, there's a dean from a particular university. He came to my school and explained about psychology. So he sort of fast track my, my, my option all the way to the, to the psychology and then mm -hmm. eventually to counseling, which is my passion. Yeah, so the thing is, right, um, knowing this uh, is one thing, because the next important part, right, also interesting part, I would say, is this double major. Oh, the majors. Or actually for, yeah, the majors. And the, for business, right, it's a bit different. Because there, if, if you actually notice, right, some universities, right, they actually offer Bachelor of Business Psychology. And then some, some, uh, some is just Bachelor of Psychology and then Bachelor of Business. So the first one is actually one degree by itself. The second one is a double degree. So how it works is, right, uh, if you could take a Bachelor of Business Psychology, right, you will learn a, a general, general part of business. You learn about accounting, economics, marketing, management, uh, economics, everything like that. And then you apply psychology knowledge that you learn in psychology into it. For the second one, if you take a double, double degree, right, then you will actually, it will be a voice degree, but you will learn a particular area of business, a sort of expert in the area. And then let's say marketing, for example, and then you, you learn psychology. So you'll be like expert in marketing psychology, for example. And of course, uh, then the last one, a simplest one is that you can take a psychology and then you take a business uh, major, double major that one. So that one is a three years program. You study slightly less about business in general, but at least you can still uh, get the, at least the important or the core part of a particular marketing or more management. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people actually relate psychology to human resource because human mm -hmm. resource need to uh, meet a lot of people, especially the employees because uh, uh, they have this so-called thing called human resource is the most important department in the company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they are basically managing the people and make sure that the company has a good environment, uh, environment and culture. But then, uh, what about talents? Okay, so uh, this is very important uh, for, for psychologists to know of, mm. of, for the future psychology students. So the thing with psychology is, right, because we learn so much about, uh, about how, to, how to deal with human, so what happens is if you see psychologists, right, some of them actually end up becoming a trainer. So what, what they can do is, because the good thing about psychology graduates is, right, because they know the strengths and weaknesses, or at least they're, they're, they're trained to identify that in a particular uh, raw talent. So they know about this, and then they, they will explain to talent and try to get the talent to polish up their, 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 their strength, of course, to polish up better, and also mm -hmm. to use the weakness to, to improvise themselves and then make it into a strength. So the good thing about psychologists is, right, you can, you, can, you can sort of like uh, polish a, a raw jewel and make it like a polished jewel, a shiny jewel mm. in a way. So you're trying to unleash a new talent in, the, in, in that sense. So you're mm. trying to train by tra making them, uh, training them in the right mindset and then how, how they can bring themselves uh, in, uh, in a better way and present themselves in a better way as well. So that's mm -hmm. how psychology can be used in, in talent management. Before this, I actually came across this course. They combine uh, psychology with music or even movie. Mm -hmm. How does, mm -hmm. how does that actually work? Because okay. I think it's under art as well, right? Yes. So that one is very, very much towards the art part of it and not so scientific part of it already. Mm -hmm. So that one, right, is very much um, understanding how, uh, the, basically for music, right, if you understand how the, the music can affect the mood, you know, or, or even the ambience of a particular environment. So, mm -hmm. uh, so the easiest example is, right, if you enter, in, if you enter a restaurant, right, you will you'll be listening about a different kind of like a music 
So when most of the like, if you go to Western restaurants, right, or those like uh, high class ones, you listen to a very sentimental kind of music, you know, without mm-hmm. any any particular lyrics. So those are the ones who make, try to make you more relaxed, you know, and then more in a way more chill and relaxed, so that when you eat, you eat happily. So mm-hmm. that's really one of one of the things you know that try to use music to play with the mood and you know, also the ambience of a particular environment. So that's how so this is this is how they play the music in a movie as well, because uh they try to set okay. the ambience. Oh, during that scene, they play that song so that the the audience might mm-hmm. cry together and relate more. Correct. So basically, um, in in that sense, is is try they're trying to use the music you know, to amplify the emotion mm-hmm. that they're trying to express. So. That's, that's the thing. The thing is, act, good acting is, 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 is essential. I'm not going to say that, that you can, you know that. But the thing is, with the music, you know, then you can sort of, sort of, sort of amplify the, the particular thing you're trying to express mm-hmm. and also makes it more interesting in a way or more relatable that you can relate to because of the music. This is one of the good things about Because uh, I think, next, let's say, right, in horror movie, if let's say the mm. ghost jump out without any music, you'll be like, what are you doing here? Why you suddenly jump out without like Correct. all the bum? Yeah, because if you watch a lot of horror movies, right, especially Insidious, right, where jump scare is very, very common, right? So that's why there are often also that sudden, sudden sound, like sudden pa, that kind of thing. So that's mm. why they try to have sound effects and some music to sort of uh, bring out the what they want to express. Like you uh-huh. say, if you don't eat, okay. it, it does feel very, very weird. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So then the, the thing is, right, other than business, there's also one thing I will touch on is law. The other thing is, I guess a lot of you already know what law, uh, law does or what you learn in law and what you end up doing after studying law. So forensic and criminology is very common. If you watch like CSI, Criminal Minds, those are very common. Even for those like Hong Kong dramas, a lot of them are talking about this. So that one is um, it's pretty much straightforward. I would say in the sense that you have seen a lot. But one thing is interesting thing is, right, because you see law is about learning about facts in a way, uh, how we deal with facts and how we use facts to, to solve a particular problem in that sense. So what psychology can help with that is, right, because Psychology is we understand about human expression, the gestures, like basically what I explained earlier for the visual cues as well. So basically with that, right, where especially you see in the particular, uh, those like uh, defense, you know, in the, in the court kind of thing, you see all those lawyers, you know, and the judges and stuff. So you see all those lawyers that they're trying to, to probe uh, the defendants, you know, a particular uh, question, for example. So they try, sometimes you see they use a louder voice, sometimes they use a softer voice, sometimes they go for an angrier voice kind of thing, mm-hmm. you know. And then sometimes they purposely use certain words, you know, to evoke the response that they want from, from the particular person. So this is uh... what they can play around with their mind and also try to get the response that they want as well. Maybe with psychology, uh, criminology and mm-hmm. forensic also, they try to analyse what kind of, what kind of mm-hmm. mindset does a, does a murderer have? Why, why does he want to kill someone? Correct. So basically, like I said, because it's evidence-based, so we're trying to find out why the motive of the killer, you know, or the murderer mm, and stuff mm. like that. Mm. So this is the good thing about psychology because you can get more evidence. Because law is about evidence-based, so psychology can help to find evidence. So oh. that is the best part of it. Okay. And then, now I come to this part, the interesting part. Because you mentioned earlier about movies and, and, and music. So I'm mm. not going to talk about this part already because we already covered that. Yeah. So the thing is, I'm going to talk about, talk about the games, performance, and events in, in short then. Because... Um, if you're talking about games, right, you can sort of relate to, to, to music as well, to, to how, how music can, can, can sort of make certain games more, interest, more interesting. And then also, uh, the gameplay itself, right, it's, also, uh, it's good to have a psychology uh, concept behind that. So to sort of uh, make the, enhance the gameplay, you know, to make the, especially those like a first person game kind of thing, you're just trying to get the player, you know, to get involved, you know, immersed into the game itself, feels like you are actually the player. And then you try to, and then you try to solve quests here and there. So that's the kind of thing, right? If you have a psychological concept, right? Involved in that to try to make, 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 make the person feel like as if it's in the real world. That's why all those like 3D, all those virtual reality, VR, it's mm-hmm. very, very important. So mm-hmm. you actually feel like, feel like you are doing, doing stuff with that. So then you feel as if it's real. So that's one part of it. And then I will say um, events is actually very interesting to actually have psychology knowledge in there. Because what happened is, right, if let's say, for example, you go to a shopping mall you know, or, or an expo center, where, where, whether it's an event about anime, about Marvel heroes and stuff like that, right, or any even like educational event, right, about, about the journey to how to become an astronaut, for example. So mm-hmm. you have like this, if, they have, if you notice, right, some of them have like a different kind of rooms or stages. Like you go in the first part, like how to be astronaut the first part. The second part, they'll show you when you're an astronaut, maybe you will see the kind of what you, what you will be experiencing as an astronaut. Then the third part is uh, what, can you, what can you study you know, to be an astronaut, that kind of thing. 
So it's like this kind of different experiences, right? That the person or the particular audience will be experiencing, right? So we are trying to use psychology concept, right? To explain that in this uh, particular part, they will, uh, they will be feeling about this, you know, feeling happy or stuff and feeling anxious or curious. So you use psychology concept in that sense, right? To actually build a event better to enhance the sort of like experience, you know, for the people who are actually enjoying or uh, attending the event. Mm -hmm. So this is an interesting part of psychology that we can use to build an event uh, to make it a more uh, lively exp experience. Yeah, so this is the good thing about that. So then after that, right, uh, talking about the, the arts part, I'll go to this part, which is the part that Sherry mentioned earlier, the game. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in this game, uh, basically, there's just uh, three video clips, or audio clips. So I'll play each one. And then the first one to guess the answer correctly, right, we will actually get the, the grab voucher. Am I right? Sherry? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. all the attendees pay attention. Type the question, uh, type the answer as fast as possible into the chat box in order to win your prize. Okay, all right, uh, ready? Hold on, actually. Yeah, let me see if I actually share the sound. I think I may not have the audio. The sound. Audio, you give me a minute. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I just want to make sure that you all hear the audio, otherwise, no one can get the answer. Okay, 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 hold on. So, all right, I'll start with the first one. Uh, give me a minute, let me try to get that. Okay, all right, three, two, one. Oh wait, there it was gone. <laughs> one, all right, and go. Okay, this is very familiar. I believe a lot of people know what is what this famous movie is. Any more guesses? Yeah, any more guess? Mm. Yeah, uh, someone said, can you play again? Uh. Can I play again? Okay, yeah. I'll play one more time. Ah, uh, cool. Give me a minute. Yep. <laughs> Is that clear enough? Yeah. Do you need one last one? Okay. Does anyone know what this famous movie is? Yep. There you go. I see your okay, answer Okay, we see a winner. Uh, Jackson. Yes. Okay. That is the first one. Okay. Oh, he even... Is this from Tokyo Drift? Okay, there's one Fast and Furious. Okay, Fast and Furious is correct. Is this Fast and Furious, Tokyo Drift, or Too Fast, Too Furious? Or the same thing? <laughs> Actually, uh, Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift will be the, the more uh, accurate answer. Okay, uh, yeah. Lele Le Lee, I think Lele Le Lee. Okay, you are a little too uh, near, but I too was... far, too near, too far, too near, but too far, okay? Okay, try again, we have two more coming. Yeah, we have two more, don't worry about it. So, hold on, I'll get to the next one. All right, prepare. One, two, three, and go. I guess I do play the whole thing. Wow. wow. Yes, yeah, yes. I'm sorry. No, I'll stop it. Yeah. I mean, we actually get the answers, but I'm yeah. sorry uh, one of you couldn't hear. I mm -hmm. mean, I uh, can't do much on that. Because uh, the rest could actually hear that as well. Okay, apparently there are a few Star Wars fans here. They popped up their answer really fast. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, Bianca Lim. Bianca Lim got this right. Okay, move on to the next. Yeah, which is the last one. Okay, this one is not a movie. This is actually a classic game. So I'm pretty much, this is very iconic to most of you. And I'll go three, two, one, I hope everyone can hear this time. Okay? And I'll go on this. Oh, 
Okay, we actually get a winner already. Yeah, we actually get a winner. Uh, uh, congratulations, Bianca. But then, uh, okay, let's give another, uh, the other prize yeah, I mean, to Marisa. Would that be okay? Yeah, I'm actually thinking, should we accept Mario or Super Mario? I mean, Super Mario is actually the name of it. Uh, but okay. actually, I mean, if you're looking about the who's faster, of course, uh, Marisa is faster. Yeah. Although, although I, you didn't answer the word super, but Mario is actually what it is, basically. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I'll give it to Marisa. All right. So we have all mm. of the winners. Congratulations to everyone. And, uh, Okay, so Bianca, Marisa, and Jackson, we will contact you after this. So, yeah, enjoy your grateful voucher and the food. All right. And I think we can move on to the next part, Manu. Okay. So, oops. Oh, okay. Yep. So, this next part will be the second Q&A, and I'll pass it to Sherry to host this. Okay, here comes our session two, Q&A session, uh, Q&A. And no worries, there's one more voucher left, so pop your question mm. in. We already see a lot of questions here, so if you want to be chosen, just, you know, keep it coming. Think of your best question and we'll get it answered. Okay, the first question, if you decide to study Bachelor Art in Psychology, will you still be able to continue Master in Science in Clinical Psych or Child Psych? Or you only have, like, option to be counselling or, like, human resource? Okay, so like I said, men I mentioned earlier, right? Whether you did a BA or BS in psychology, you will still be able to go to your, your master's in clinical side, child side, or even other areas. So what happened is, right, essentially speaking, you will need to get an honours degree. So um, generally speaking, the honours degree is the fourth year full research year. And there's a requirement in, in most countries, in Australia, New Zealand in particular. And then what happened is, right, you get the honours, that will be sort of like a prerequisite or the entry requirement and to actually proceed to your the master's in the psychology area. Basically, any psychology specialist area, right, that like the clinical and child, for example, that is the one that you need to go for. So just three years is not sufficient. You need to get additional one year, the honours, mm -hmm. and then you can actually get, get into the, the master's. But bear in mind, of course, different countries have different different styles as well. So, I mean, different kind of structure. So, that one I will address in the next session because uh, it's a bit hard for me to address in here when you haven't seen how, how the whole structure is. Mm -hmm. so okay, in general, what, are the, okay. hmm. what are the popular careers in the field of psychology? And also, for psychologists, do we have to get a PhD or does it depend on the career? Okay. <laughs> So uh, popular careers, I would say, I will answer this is like two parts of the question. So popular careers, I would say in the field of psychology, generally speaking, I mean, if you really go to specialize in the area, though, of course, it could be a child side, clinical side, abnormal side. So those are very, very specialized area, health side, for example. So, but then if, you, if you're not into the area of the masters, right, then of course, then you'd be more general towards HR, event, manage, event managers, you can even go to game, game, gaming industry and stuff. So that one is very general. So... Um, I guess the second part you were asking that to be a psychologist, do we need to get a PhD? So mm -hmm. I, I assume that you are looking more towards the, the, the specialist part of psychology already. So whether you need a PhD or not, it depends on whether what pathway you're going for. If you're going more for towards the research pathway or you need to be a lecturer, you know, lecturing in a uni, for example. So then of course getting PhD is better because PhD essentially is about research, researching. So that's why going, going for PhD is good, it's good for that. But mm -hmm. otherwise, if you just want to be a specialist in the uh, specialist in the area, clinical psychology, for example, then a master's is sufficient. You can go for PhD if you want to, but it's an optional thing. If you want to be more hands-on, I would say. Okay, mm. thank you. Next question. Other mm -hmm. than going for MA and become a psychologist, what other career path for a BA psychology? <clears throat> other than going MA or uh, become a psychology, what other career path? Uh, I mean... Like I mentioned earlier, right? I mean, if you just completed a BS psychology and if you don't really want to continue studying further, then of course you can just go into the workforce straight away. Whether, whether like I said, like I mentioned earlier, you can go to music, performance, you can go to events, movies, industry, basically a lot of places that need psychology. So that one, if you want to go with just a bachelor degree. But of course, if you, do, if you want to go master's, but you do want to go, let's say, master's in psychology, specialist field, like what I mentioned earlier, 
that of course you can also take masters in uh, MBA can take that as well masters in management and counseling so one of it so you also have quite a lot of options that other than psychology degree you can still go to a different area even master of social work for example that's still possible too yeah okay uh sorry for interrupting but then uh i forgot to mention this we are gonna uh due to time constraint we are just gonna pick some of the uh question and answer mm -hmm. if you realize that your question is not answered it's actually from the q a box so you can just read it okay all right uh okay next question mm -hmm. can i be a detective if i study psychology and law psychology <coughs> plus law okay I can tell you one thing, right? To be a police, to be a detective, or any anything around the work, uh, police workforce, right? There is no degree of such needed, okay? But of course, if you have, it's a very, very good advantage. Because the thing is, you, know, like, uh, you can you can also go to be a detective with a psychology degree or with a law degree, or mm -hmm. if it's, it's good if you have both knowledge. Because the thing is, you understand how how the criminal works or how the criminal thinks and stuff like that. So you are having an edge over that already, and also and also the thing is um. If you know the law, then you know how 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 the criminals or even even some people, right? Not not to say just criminals, how some people may just use the law or or, or tweak around you know, with the law and stuff you know, to try to run away run away from from the from from escape from any 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 punishment. But because you know the law, then you can you can make sure that because based on the law, this person can be can be held captive for for doing this and that. Uh, so so it's, it's a very good knowledge if you have it. So it's detective. easier to apply as well. Mm. It's way easier to apply. Because you understand better on both sides, the legal way and also the uh, human thinking. Okay, uh, next mm. question. Can I study uh, science and art psychology together? <clears throat> okay, so the thing is, right, generally speaking, if you look into the university structure and stuff, right, generally speaking, they ask you to select either Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science. So generally speaking, you can't study uh, both and then you graduate with Bachelor of Arts plus Science in Psychology. There is no such option over there. So the thing is, right, um, like I said, mentioned earlier, both essentially study the same thing, just that the structure will be slightly different because one is more analytical, more research, just more project driven. And then the other one is more ap ap uh, application based or like the more practical based. So just speaking, it's a bit different, but uh, some people actually study like Bachelor of Arts first and then they actually switch to Bachelor of Science. It is possible to do it that way because the thing is, like I said, at the end of the day, they are quite similar components. But of mm -hmm. course, um, not, not exactly everything can be transferred because it um, depends on which university and stuff, that's also a different factor too. So it's good to it's good to know that uh you can go for either one, but if you really want to switch, then you can discuss with the union on how you want to switch. It's possible as well. So if you yeah. want to switch, it's possible. But then if you want to take both, let's say you completed one, then you want to take another one, maybe it's not that recommended, and you you might not be doing uh getting the course as well because they might not allow you. Correct, because the thing mm -hmm. is essentially I said you're studying the almost a similar similar stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's just a structure is different, but the content is the same. So university may not allow that. So maybe they just ask you to study a master's to sort of like uh, enhance further what you want to know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, one more. How long do we need to graduate? The minimum year. <clears throat> How long do you? Okay. The minimum year need to graduate as for a psychology degree is three years. Yeah, that's the minimum needed for graduate. If you go further to master and stuff, that could be like for, uh, for almost five to six years, depends mm, 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 on the course. Mm. Okay, uh, some people ask, which university mm -hmm. are popular or best to study psychology? Okay, see, this one is a bit, a bit hard to explain because the thing is, um, first of all, I didn't mention any institutions here earlier because the thing mm. is, I, I'm not uh, telling you which country is better for psychology and stuff. So this is not what I, I'm covering in this session. But this session is meant for, for you to understand is what is psychology about and, and, not, uh, and basically to see how it can be applied to us uh, in, in general. So on, on that one, right, I would suggest you to contact us and then uh, we can explain further as well. And also one thing, make sure you attend the next session. That also will also explain uh, some of the particular potential options you, you, uh, you, uh, you can get in different areas or different countries. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we are done with Q and A. Mm -hmm. All right. And okay, let's choose one of the best questions that you think. Oh, there were so many questions earlier. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah, there's a lot of good questions, but then we only get to choose one. Let me think. Um,
I would say the best one, I would say the Daily Lean's question. The one about yeah. the bachelor psychology and then even the continue masters in clinical and stuff. Yeah, how does it work? That one is a good question. Mm. All right. Yes, we have another winner for our last voucher of the day. Uh, congratulations, Lillian. Lillian. And we'll get in yep. touch with you later. Okay. All right. Okay. We are going to close this Q&A session. Thank you, everyone, for asking. And okay, mind you, we can continue the next part, I think. Yeah. Yep. Next part is basically just that. And before I let this um, end this part, I just want to summarize first, right? In general, right, psychology um, is very evident in our daily life. Like, I mean, like, like I explained all, all the stuff earlier, right? You can see that psychology is about, uh, just not about human mind, it's also about human interaction. So basically from, your, from the day you're born to now, you have a lot of different kind of interactions, whether it's like a social interaction or, or whether, whether it's actually a, a, a non-verbal interaction. So it's very interesting to study psychology in the sense that you can understand yourself better and also understand people better and then you can improve the com conversation or communication between parties mm -hmm. better. So that's how I see psychology is helpful to us. Basically, psychology has some uh, has a lot of things to do from A to Z in our daily life and also basically mm -hmm. everything. So you cannot yeah, escape psychology yeah. at all. Even when yeah, you uh, sit down and do nothing that has something to do with psychology as well. Correct. Whatever mm -hmm. we were thinking and feeling and stuff, that's also part of it. Mm -hmm. So I guess we are done with today's session and have you mm -hmm. ever wondered how human behavior interact with each other you learned that already and also how different would your life be with psychology we also learned that already through the cognitive triangle okay thank you manu for today's session and this is not it we already mentioned we have part two which is coming on 22nd of august from 12 to 1 p.m remember to register because a lot of people actually ask uh, the pathway or the career and even the future we're gonna share it on the next session so make sure you don't miss out and register okay all right uh oh yeah before we go i uh i sent a registration uh no survey form on the chat box appreciate it if you guys can answer it and give us our feedback so that we can uh, improve and even come up with a more mm -hmm. exciting topic that you want to listen okay and also the next link is the registration link to the next session. All right. If you have any question, just contact us through the contact info on the screen and we'll uh, talk to you more. All right. All right. Yep. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day and Bye. stay safe. Yep. Take care, everyone.